In this video, I'll cover how to set up a group visit using Zoom webinars. For example, a group session for 10 to 15 diabetic patients about flu season and flu vaccination. To start, let's set up a webinar. Webinars must be created by logging into your Zoom for Healthcare account via a web browser. If you will be running your group visit with the help of an MOA, it is important to change a setting in your Zoom account first. In the left-hand panel, click on Settings. And underneath the section In Meeting Basic, locate the setting titled Co-host and toggle it on. You will know it's on if the toggle appears to be blue. This setting will allow you to promote an MOA to co-host during the webinar so they can assist in moderating questions, removing others from the webinar if necessary, or screen sharing on your behalf. With your settings now updated, click on the webinar options in the left-hand panel. Then click on the schedule webinar button to get started. In the topic field, enter the name for your webinar. This will be visible and should be reflective of the topic for your group visit. For example, I'll use flu season info session. The description field is optional, but can be used to add more information about the group visit. Information included in this area will be included in any automated emails sent via Zoom to participants. In the when field, enter the date and time for the group visit. Zoom does have a limitation to only schedule webinars on the hour or half hour, and webinars cannot be scheduled in other increments. In the duration field, enter the anticipated duration of the visit. And don't worry, if your group visit goes longer than the scheduled time, the webinar will not end abruptly. In the time zone field, select your local time zone and please leave the recurring webinar box unchecked. In the registration area, please check the box titled required. This will require that anyone joining the webinar is registered beforehand. In the video area, you can choose whether to have video options available to hosts and or panelists the host in this case being the provider or staff member running the webinar, and the panelists, if you have any, may be other peers or professionals that you have invited to help deliver the webinar with you. In the audio field, we advise leaving the setting as both. This will allow patients to connect to audio in whichever way is more convenient for them. We advise connecting with computer audio whenever possible, However, telephone audio can be helpful for patients who have a low speed internet connection. Under the webinar options area, the Q&A checkbox allows the Q&A feature to be used within the webinar. This will allow participants of the group visit to type their questions into the Q&A box during the webinar that the host can then moderate and answer during the session. The Enable Practice Session option allows you to start the webinar and test all of your audio and video equipment, ensure your lighting is correct, etc. before you broadcast the session live. This is a helpful option, especially if you are setting up your first group visit. When using this setting, once you have tested all your equipment, you will be able to go live by pressing a broadcast button and any waiting registered participants will then be able to join your live session. We advise leaving the only authenticated users can join setting turned off as this requires any participants joining to be logged into a Zoom account. And it's likely that not all participants would have a Zoom account in advance of your session. The alternative hosts area may be used to specify an alternative host for the group visit. However, if you are using a PHSA provisioned license, this alternative host must be a provider who also uses a PHSA provisioned Zoom account. 
this is not where we will be entering the MOA's details. Once everything is entered, press the schedule button to save and schedule the webinar. Now that our webinar is set up, we can begin to invite both patients and any supporting staff to join the group visit. To invite patients, you will need to send them the link to register for the webinar. Ideally, this will be done using email. To locate the registration link, navigate to webinars in the left-hand pane and click on the webinar you created. Scroll to the bottom of the page and you will now see a section titled Invitations. Here, you can copy the registration link by clicking on the button to the right of the link. This link can then be placed in a patient communication for the patients to self-register. We advise communicating to patients that the name they use to register will be visible to others in the group visit. If there is a certain amount of anonymity required, the patients could be advised to register using their initials only or first name and last initial, for example. When sending emails to patients, it is advised to use an email service designed for large volumes of email. This may include using built-in email services provided by your EMR vendor or using an email service such as MailChimp. If you require guidance or support with emailing patients, please reach out to the doctor's technology office. At the bottom of the screen, you will see an area titled Manage Attendees. Any registered patients can be viewed here by pressing the View link. You may also cancel their registration or resend their registration link through this area. If an MOA will be assisting you to moderate the webinar, they should be invited as a panelist. Under the invitations area, you will see a section titled Invite Panelists. Press the edit link to the right. Here, you can enter the MOA's name and email address. Ensure the send invitation to all newly added panelists immediately checkbox is checked and press save. Your MOA will then receive an email invite to join the webinar. With your webinar now scheduled and the patients having their invitations, let's now discuss how to start the webinar. To start the webinar, open the Zoom application on your computer. From the Home tab, your webinar will be visible on the right-hand side when it is your next upcoming scheduled Zoom event for that day. To start your webinar, press the Start button. If a window pops up asking you to join audio, we advise selecting Join with Computer Audio. If you set up your webinar with the Enable Practice Session setting turned on, you will see an orange bar across the top of your screen to notify you that you are currently in practice mode. If you have used this setting, now is a great time to check that your audio and video equipment is functioning properly. To enable your camera, press the Start Video button in the bottom left corner of your screen. To mute or unmute yourself, press the Mute Unmute button in the bottom left corner of the screen. If you are experiencing audio or video issues, you can adjust your settings for both your camera and your microphone by pressing the upward arrow button to the right of the mute, unmute, and start stop video buttons, and you will see a selection of options here to help you troubleshoot. To make the participants panel visible, press the participants button at the bottom of your screen. Your participants panel will be separated by whether participants are a panelist or whether they are an attendee. If using the help of an MOA invited earlier as a panelist, you will see the MOA in the panelists area once they join. To promote them to a co-host so they can assist in moderating the webinar, hover over their name, press the more button, and click on make co-host. They will now be labeled as a co-host. 
patients that have registered for the group visit will be listed under the attendees area. If a patient requires to be on video for any reason, they must first be promoted to a panelist. Please note that panelists are able to share their video, mute and unmute themselves, and will be able to see the attendee list, but are not permitted to share their computer screen. At the bottom of the participants panel, when you're in the panelist view, there are also mute all and unmute all buttons that can be used to limit distractions during the webinar. Throughout the meeting, hosts and co-hosts are able to share their screen if desired by pressing the share screen button at the bottom of the screen. In order for another host to be able to share their screen, no one can currently be sharing their screen. If you wish to switch sharing screens from one host to another, the first host will have to press the stop share button at the top of the screen. If using the Q&A feature, the Q&A questions can be viewed by pressing the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. This is a great opportunity where an MOA can help to moderate the session. Here, you can type answers to the questions directly or mark a question to be answered live over the webinar. There is also an available text chat feature that can be easily moderated with the assistance of an MOA. To view the chat, press the chat button at the bottom of the screen. It will open a panel to the right where you can view the chat. This is also an area that can be useful for sharing clickable links to patient resources. To end the webinar, press the red end button at the bottom of the screen and select end meeting for all. The webinar will then close for all participants. For more virtual care resources or to request one-on-one -on -one consultation, please contact the Doctors Technology Office by email at dtoinfo at doctorsofbc.ca. Please let us know if you find these videos helpful or how the DTO can serve you better by clicking the link below and responding to our short survey.